people are saying, hey, should I invest in real estate? Should I become a real estate investor? And so let's take a look at this real estate investor. And an example, here's a beautiful thing about the internet, social media, is so many people are willing to share with you their experience. Mm. And uh, for the better ones, they share with you the real uh, situation that they're in as real estate investors. So this person, let me set this up. This person right now collects $350,000 in rental income. But here's what he really takes home. See if you can stomach this if you are in this guy's position. Let's take a look at this clip. I collect about $320,000 in rent every single month. However, month. at the end of the month, I only take home a fraction of that. After I show you the six major expenses that come out of my rent every single month, I'm going to tell you how much I actually net. The biggest expense is my mortgages. I spend about $135,000 every single month in mortgage payments. The next is property taxes. I put aside about $35,000 every single month in property taxes so I can pay them at Smart. the end of every year. And my insurance on all these properties costs me about 20000 a month. Then I have an in-house property management team that I pay them a salary plus all the software that goes along with it, cost me about 30000 a month. And because I'm a landlord and not a slumlord, I set money aside every single month to maintain the properties and take care of them so they hold their value. That costs me about 30000 a month. And then because the properties aren't always occupied, I set aside about $20,000 every single month for vacancy. So at the end of every single month, I make between forty dollars and $50,000 on all the rentals that I own. That may not sound like a lot because of how much I collect every single month, but that's the price to pay when you buy rental properties using none of your own money. Okay, so he's basically he's basically making 11% hmm. on whatever he's earning. So he's collecting that much, was it 320 a 320, month? 320 a month. But net, 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 it's only 11%. Yeah. So he's saying, by the way, smart in terms of how he's setting a assignment, which a lot, a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. They don't budget properly. The, the cups that he was using, putting it, a lot of people don't do it. They see this cash coming, like, oh, I've never seen this type of money before. And they blow it. And it's, you know, somebody files for, um, what do you call that? Uh, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, um, when you try to kick somebody out? Oh, uh, eviction. Um, eviction. Yeah. yeah, yeah somebody's eviction. not paying rent. Um, they, 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 they damage the property. Yeah. Uh, they do different, different things because it's not theirs. A lot of landlords don't do that. Smart way to do this. But here's, here's the first thing, though. Before you even get to the type of in, uh, income level, before you even get to the type of real estate investor status, you got to first acquire the property. First one, at least. First one. Yeah. So if, if, if for those of you guys that don't know, if you're going to come up with it as an investor, if it's not owner occupied, let's say you're, we we're just talking about the four flat in Berwyn. What does yes. a four flat in Berwyn run in, in uh, back in Chicago? Four seventy five right now. Okay. So you're going to need at least a twenty percent down payment. Yeah. So uh, so forty seven. That's ten percent. A plus two, so you need about nine. Yeah, you need about ninety four thousand dollars as a down payment yeah. to buy a four flat. That's number one. It's, it's considered an investment at that point. That's right. Correct. Yeah. It's not owner occupied. If right. it's owner occupied, less down payment. Yes. Maybe FHA qualified. Yeah. But if you're Chicago, you're buying a four flat. Yeah. You need a ninety thousand dollar down payment to even be in the mix. What's what people who have businesses in the midst of that would they be able to do an SBA loan for that? Uh, and SBA, well, it's, uh, uh, it's not a business; it's a um, it's a mortgage, right? So, um, but no, would they be able to withdraw? It? Like some people, like some people, if they have, have a line of credit, yeah, yeah, yeah. be able to extract that money and mm -hmm. utilize that money for the specific purchase for the mortgage. Yeah, if they get, if they have, if they have a line of credit through a bank, yeah, right, that's another hurdle. So, not only need the cash, the yeah. down payment, you need the credit. Credit, yeah. So, if you want to get involved in a real estate game, you got to have cash and credit, and have a lot of it. Yeah. So. And that, that's where a lot of people don't don't get it. I was like, if I want to invest in property, I'm going to get a, a, four, a four flat. Yeah. A four flat meaning there's four different units in there that you can mm -hmm. rent. I live in one. I rent out the other three. Yeah. Cool. But you need ninety seven, ninety four thousand dollars. Yeah. You know. To, so that's that's a big hump. When I was making twenty grand a year, thirty grand a year, forty grand a year in, in, in the military, no way in heck I can raise ninety seven thousand dollars. So that was my first thing. That was my first deterrent in terms of being a real estate investor. I just didn't have the cash and capital. I'd, I had nothing left over. When I when I had um, when I had a job, it's because I was paycheck to paycheck. Barely making it by. Mm -hmm. So for someone who's looking to get their very first property, what maybe like two steps they can take to be financially in a, be, in, a in a better position? Well, if you're living paycheck to paycheck like I was, yeah. My 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 thing was that's why I should shift into insurance. Yeah. Because I didn't even need any money or cash or capital to start an insurance business. I just went there and sold insurance. Yeah. I went there and sold retirement planning. I went there and sold, found some meat. My wife and I are flying tomorrow to see a former, uh, a per, listen, if I share with you their person's name, everybody know who they are, but we're seeing a client tomorrow. And uh, they're uh, 80 some years old now. And uh, the person that's advised them about their, their retirement plan has misguided them for the last 10, 20 years. And the biggest thing is lack of communication. Yeah. 
And so in the meantime, they've lost 20%. What does it cost me to acquire a client like that? Zero. Zero. And if we move their, their business from point A to point B, put it from one pocket to another pocket, put it from this financial product to another financial product, there's commissions and fees that's related to that. You know, this trip to market could be a fifty, sixty, seven thousand dollar client, right? But that's what this doesn't cost me anything. So for example, if I if I put out, you know, a hundred bucks mm-hmm. and I make $150 in return, that's a 50% return on investment, mm-hmm. right? If I put zero down and make 150 bucks, what's my rate of return? Yeah. What is it? So if, if I put a hundred down, but get 150 in return, what's my, what my right? It's, it's, it's 50% yeah, return, right? Yeah, correct. But I put zero down, right? And I get 150%. You pull them out. You, huh? get the, you get the full percentage. Which is, is it 150%? Right, correct. Wrong. That's what I thought too. It's wrong. No. It's infinity because there is an un- infinite amount of rate of return because I put zero down. So to answer your question, find a product or service, something you can sell that doesn't cost you anything to acquire a client. Because once you sell a client and you make a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks in our case, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars back, but it costs me zero dollars to outlay to acquire a client. So for someone watching right now saying, all right, shit, what's what's a product or what's a service? One or two, what would you say, one or two products or one or two services that people can acquire? Well, for example, I just talked about insurance. Okay. Insurance, um, number one. Uh, uh, some form of service-based business, you know, uh, some form of way you can sell your your intellect, your coaching, your consulting. How many how many people today are putting in an area of, of, of expertise they have in a, in a packaged product yeah. uh, uh, that t- costs you very little to make a digital product, takes a bit of time, maybe create an e-product, doesn't cost you any materials. Yeah, That's another way to do it. Um, you know, uh, so that's any any product or service that you can go out there, it doesn't cost you anything to create or build or have the inventory, acquire something for inventory, that you're in a net, net positive. That's why digital products, sometimes creating events, but the downside with events is you need you know, we got people out there uh, doing events. But if you're doing events, you got to put a down payment on the event venue. Yeah. And then you got to do social media advertising. W- one time there's a guy asked me one time, hey, man, you got $60,000 a month you can put on a credit card. I said, yeah, for what? Let's touch you on Amazon e-com store. Mm. Okay. So why do you need this? So we need to put $60,000 a month on Amazon advertising to buy people from your store. So that's it's a sponsored ad. So they buy your product, whatever that product is. The problem though is if you don't spend $60,000 a month, people won't see your store. I don't like that type of business. Yeah. Because it's heavily dependent upon advertising. I think advertising should be about 10, 20, 30% at most of what it takes for you to grow a business. If you grow a business and you're heavily dependent upon advertising, good luck. Because now you're not in charge of your leads. Yeah. You're renting your list instead of earning and building and growing your, your reputation. Um, let's look at a guy. So this, this, that example, somebody that's what they call a buy and hold type of situation. Another way to invest in real estate is to flip it. To buy it low and sell it high, let's take a look at this next clip. Here's how you lose money on a real estate deal. This is a home that we purchased at the beginning of last year from a wholesaler here in Houston. We paid $145,000 for this home and we put around $47,000 into it. At the time, the comps were saying that this home would sell for around $260,000. Unfortunately, when we listed it was when the interest rates went through the Bingo. roof. Mm. And because of that, the home has just been sitting for around 10 months. Ouch. Now, we finally got a contract on it for $240,000, but after all the closing costs, fees, and commissions, we will actually be losing around $8,000 on this home. This is the reality of real estate, but we're going to take our losses and move on to the next deal. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed. So the bottom line is real estate investing is a great way to make income. The downside to it is the financial costs. And when you make a mistake like that, it sets you back not only 10 months, it was sitting for 10 months. What about the three, six months it took for them to rehab the property? What about the 60, 90 days before you look for the property? Yeah. So an hour, uh, um, you know, you're talking about hours and hours of your own time. You're talking about a year and a half of it sitting in the market from acquisition to exit. And then you still lost 8,000 yeah. bucks uh, versus selling a, product online versus selling insurance versus selling something that's easy that you don't have to acquire something. He had to acquire property. Yeah. Had, how do you put another 47,000? So you need to cash too. So that's the harsh reality of investing in real estate. It's a doable thing, but you have to have cash. You have to have credit. You have to have a little bit of capital to get it going. Now, the powers that be out there, well, Matt, you don't need to do that. You know, understandable. But at the end of the day, even if you're wholesaling, even if you say, Matt, you, need, you can use somebody else's money. If you're using somebody else's money, guess what you're, why would somebody give you their money to invest in real estate? Because they want, they want to cut. Yeah. So even if you're using somebody else's money, guess what you're still doing? You're still giving a percentage of that up to somebody else. Now, that might be good for three, four, five deals. Eventually, then you have to start using your own cash. 
And so that's why I think uh, partnerships and mentorships are very important if you're going to be a real estate investor, just like anything else that you got going on in your life. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.